person. Because we did have, I don't remember which game it was, but having a Lunox alone as your main damage dealer with a single target is not going to be enough. So, not sure if they're going to go for the Claude, because they did hover over the Claude earlier. And it is, op oh, it is open, yeah. I, I think the Lunox is still okay. Uh, just because, like, single target wise, he can burst down one of the players here, and researchers don't exactly have super tanky heroes compared to what the Uranus, obviously, which uh, Faras hates, <laughs> and also the Atlas. <laughs> but it's a lot of Valer isn't that tanky. Yeah. Cho, Cho isn't that super tanky as well. Uh, Carmilla is tanky, but only if it's, like, right in your face. So I feel like the Lunox is still okay. And now with the Camilla Cecilian pickup here, ooh, I'm liking this. Heck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys I... do me a favor and tell the viewers how much of that combo is gonna bring to the table between these two heroes? It's it's just the it's just, you know, the classic um you know couple, the duo, right? If they are together, they are just way stronger. You uh Camilla, great front line, and Cecilion is like a carry. It's like a mage carry, right? A late game insurance, heavy scaling. It can always, you know, it's always safe to play a late game draft with Cecilion. And now you have Cecilion carry, which is one of the uh, most banned draft during the regular season. And I believe, uh, I've, I don't know if it's you, Faras, or Terence who brought up, who asked the question, what will we see different from Resurgence? Uh, in my mind, it's either the Farsa or the Cecilion. Well, I guess we're getting the Cecilion Cremila, so that's good enough. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens inside the game. Game number two, it could be possibly the end for Resurgence in the upper brackets. They might do, uh, drop down after this, but we'll have to wait and see. It is Geek Fam and Resurgence. I have Terence and, of course, Husky right here. Guys, tell us the story of the game. Well, thank you so much for us, and of course, Geek Fam going up against Resurgence now. Uh, I, I like your point, what you point out as well, Husky. Like the Carmilla and Cecilia is just ridiculous here. The Moonlight Watch just adds so much value. It's just additional spell, and in this case, it just happened right in our face. Look at this, safely out of position, and additional spells being dished out as well. It's like you having three spells instead of uh, two spells, which is both your spells coming in from your heroes and also the sub spells which is the flickers and and such so having an additional one really helps in terms of uh, some of these team fights yep and, and especially when you have access to it at level one right from the get-go which means that uh resurgent the carmilla Cecilion, you can kind of take risk early on and know that there's a way for you to get out uh, you have to get out of jail card um, if you kind of if you kind of tweak it and make it available only after you get your ultimate then it would be a different story, but that's not the case right now, which gave Resurgence a lot of room to play around. And KZ KZP alongside Singh, when you get this Kremlin Cecilion, they love to take this risk. Yeah, definitely. But at the same time here, Zorn now playing the Atlas here. He's going to demonstrate to us how Atlas is going to be played here. And I'm looking forward to see how Zorn is going to be able to set up all these uh, pickoffs here. KZP on the Kamila, they do scout each other out. And now look look at this. Both of these times just dishing it out. and. I don't think it's been much of an issue as well. Oh wow, they, they, torrent, they, they push the Atlas away, so that secures an easy first blood for Resurgence. Arts gets taken down, and the kill goes over to KZP. It's uh, that was just fantastic stuff for Resurgence. Coming. Yeah, that was just unfortunate there coming from Geekfam. They, they were not ready to take this kind of team fights as well. Uh, Geekfam played a very similar playstyle from game number one, and Resurgence now, they just capitalizing here and, and just punishing their their rotations here just just to know that geek fam doesn't play like a five-man groupie in the early stages and right now research is getting the first kill that was really nice but zao zon trying to open the map and Un unfortunately say kcb is just so tanky look at this kcb getting tickled by the tank and Zorn dropping half hp just like that and it's gonna give a yeah. little bit more stacks here going in favor of zinc Oh, Sana getting ganged out on. You have Fix and Ozora Veki forcing the flicker from Sana, so this Cho is gonna survive. Recall, yep, the tower's gonna take a bit of damage, but backup is already coming in from the rest of Resurgence. And, and I like how uh, more, more and more teams are starting to figure out that, okay, Uranus, not strong, 3 level 4. All you need to do, get an early Ooh. gang uh, to kill him off, but better Ash, right? It's gonna kill up Jason in the middle lane. Oh, that beautiful, beautiful stuff here coming from Zorn as well as Dominus. The Farsar RKO combo 
with Atlas, just so much damage. But now Zorn does not have the ultimate available. He's gonna buy a little bit of time here. Engagement come Ooh, in. RSG go? going to go for the commit here, but from the sides as well. Zorovaki going to be zoning LY4 from the sides. And Zorn, once again, he's still messing around one of the players here with the Cho, and unfortunately, he still survives. So a lot of attention being diverted away, but still, on the contrary, Geekfab loses dominance in the process. Yep. Geekfab would have lost much more if uh, Vecchi didn't come in. Sure, he's underleveled, but uh, he does deal a significant amount of damage. He's zoned out LY4 completely from the fight, uh, or else Resurgence would have gotten uh, more than just uh, more than just Dominus. So either way, it's, it's uh, a slight win for Resurgence. They got the Farsa. Uh, they also got the Turtle. And again, LY4, still given the space that he needs, uh, he is just so good, right? He, he clears the boss side jungle. Now he's going to take the bottom lane. That's two full waves for his carry. And after that, uh, I, he probably either will go back to the jungle or he'll just wait for the next wave to crash in. You have Jason to back him up. So definitely no problem. LA4 though, right to Azura Becky, who will immediately pop his ultimate. Unfortunately, not able to get the kill to LY4. Turns his attention onto Jason, flickers forward, and now Azura Becky takes out Jason. LY4 will trade back and he will get the kill. But Dominus is there for the counter kill. So it's two for Geek Fam and one for Resurgence. Very, very worthy here coming from Azorovaki. He understood he has the damage to drop them low enough here. And as soon as he went for the flicker, he got the kill. He knows he's going to die to LY4. He did the damage done. And because of that, they took down the marksman. However, RSG, they respond with this. They lose LY4, but still, they're trying to fatten up Sing right now on this uh, Sicilian with 2-0-1 as of now. Building even more stacks ahead. And this is going to be a great start here from Resurgence as they try to pull a lead in terms of the economy. Yep, so Arts uh, getting taken out again. Here comes Sanguine oh. Claw and a hip pound damage. This Dominus gets dominated in that situation. So Resurgence finds an easy pick off. Looking for that bot tier 1. I don't think Geek Fam can contest this in any way. Uh, however, Fix was able to uh, amass a massive wave. That, I believe, is two full waves in the top lane. Uh, so Yusana has to deal with that as the rest of Resurgence will try to mow down this bottom lane. Turtle yep, and at the same soon. time as well, they're trying to buy enough time here. Zorn is trying his best to control his lane here, but unfortunately, say it's been a tough one here. But now, Azorovaki yeah. brings with the brilliance and a big oh. RKO pulls up back. And now, here comes the far Farsa, and they shut down Tree Man from the side of Resurgence. My oh my, the, the Atlas Farsa combo is just unreal. Yeah, Zorn with it, another good flicker. And when you win fights around objectives like this against Geek Fam, they're gonna take mo more than that. Kill three members, they take the turtle, now they turn their attention uh, to the bottom lane. Fortunately enough for Resurgence, they're not gonna lose any structures as of now. Um, the way was pushed out in the bottom lane is us will go to work on that. But silver lining is LY4 still kind of in a good position, having those farms coming in, matching up with Fix on that cloud. Um, Geek fan though do have an advantage because they took the mid-tier one and, and they are ready for another fight. We just have to be really careful. Just one oh no, seeing here getting caught out once again, but at the same time, Fix will shut him down with the at the edge here with the feather airstrike, and that's gonna be Cecilian down for the count. And this is not looking too good for resurgence here because Geek Fab, they're picking off the right targets as of now, and now Arts is gonna be out of control with this Uranus split the split push. And LI4 gets picked off from the sides as well immediately. Uh, recall spam coming from Zorn. The mind games are in play now, Husky. Oh, here we go. Zorn just uh, a classic mail recall, recall emote. Uh, mental warfare. So, LY4 is slightly uncharacteristic for him to get caught up, but it's just keep making the right decision uh, to rotate. Uh, however, for Resurgence, again, you have to carry, you have to Sicilian. Late game is never going to, going to be a problem. They just have to kind of stave out Geek Fam. This is exactly what happened in game 1. Geek Fam got an early lead and they were able to push the lead forward. So if Resurgence can kind of slow that down, slow that down from happening, uh, they, they are going to come back in this game, give them another extra 5 minutes. Yeah, it, it, there is a possibility for that. However, in terms of the tanky department here, they need more tanky items up on towards KZP because him as a solo tank is going to be a tough one here. And based on the itemizations, you can see Resurgence, uh, they have a Athena shield up on Valer, which is quite surprising. They are diverging Hello, all their economy into towards the Cho into a full damage on Sana. So uh, they might need to drag this a longer a little bit here before they have actually stand a chance of what Geek Fam is coming in. But as of now, you can see Geek Fam, they're setting up shop for the Turtle in case Resurgence continues 
contest this, and Zorn is ready for the big RKO. Will he go for it here? KCB comes in, he's looking for Jason. Zorn, is he gonna go for it? Seems to me Jason in some trouble, and the Torrent will force him back, so he's gonna be fine for now. Yep, as long as Jason has Torrent, uh, it's not gonna be easy for Zorn to get an Atlas RKO uh, unless you know he gets the flicker to connect. But just so much patience from Geek Fam. They they have they 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 did this in game one where uh, Zorn Dominus hides in the brush. Someone comes near, especially Jason, and he just gets killed off. This is the kind of similar tactic that, that they're imp uh, applying in game two. But Resurgence, they should have realized by now that they're, they're not on a timer. I think they're pretty fine playing in this situation. As long as they can get the farm, uh, Constellation Price will be multiple pickouts, and Zorn might be the target as he walks into the tree man ambush. Ozoraveki is there trying to provide backup. Zorn will have to flicker away, uses his body double, and Ozoraveki will also try to get to safety, but. He has to flicker away as well for the asteroid just to zone out the rest of Resurgence. Uh, Zor Becky and Zorn will get out. Yep, on the contrary here, Fix was able to take a tier 2 down bottom here. This Cloud Split push is almost level 15, 9 minutes of the game. And now going for a solo fight here, Blazing Blue Red, almost shutting down Zana, oh. actually getting the kill. But KZB was flying in the weight at the mirror, but the assist from Geek Fam is here. He's gonna try and burst him down, but the save from Sig with the Moonlight was and KZB lives to tell the tale. My goodness. Oh, KGB, I, I'm surprised that he did not go down. Uh, so, so much resistance from this Carmilla. Unfortunately, they had to give up Sana. Uh, first death for this chill, Fed the comes in again. Another Blazing Duet Fix just his attention on the LY4. That's a solo kill on the carry. 35 seconds down for the Marksman of Resurgence. Cecilia not able to retaliate enough. And Fix playing out of his mind. LY4, third death of the game. 10 minutes in the game so far, the Sicilian is slowly gathering his stacks, but it's not gonna be enough because as of now, GeekFam, they're just leaving them choked at their base right now, and they do not want to give Sing any kind of opportunities to come up online, but as of now, this is the best they can do for now from the side of Resurgence. And Sana getting focused now, GeekFam will shut him down. Mega kill for Fix right now, 4-0-4, GeekFam going out of the mine, and they're gonna be objective driven right now. What is the damage? That is absolutely insane. Solo kills uh, Sana, solo kills LY4 with a full 10 stack blazing duet. I, the confidence from Fix is absolutely through the roof and Geekfam is not going to secure that lord. I don't think Resurgence can contest this. They have no choice but to play the exact same storyline from game 1 where they try to defend against the lord push. But honestly, this, this one is going to be a bit harder to pull off. Yeah, definitely. And not to mention as well, Fix is already 10k net worth ahead as compared to the highest net worth from the side research is being synced with 6.6k net worth, which is going to be a tough one here. They need to drag this long enough, especially on the, the lollipop up from, from the side of Sync here. Uh, the Clock of Destiny. And you need time here uh, on from the side of Sync to actually rack up the 10 full stack of Clock of Destiny before he actually comes online. And maybe he needs to drag the game a little bit more, uh, 3 to 4 minutes more, if he really want to see Sync slowly shines in these next game, few fights to come. Yeah, and I think it's the same same situation for LY4 as well. You kind of need to drag up uh, three to five minutes more. Uh, that is under the premises that they are actually able to get farmed, but if they are choked in their base, then that kind of just goes right out the window because they are not getting resources. Um, passive go is just not sufficient at all. So Lord's gonna push down bottom lane. Geek fam again, oh. the blazing duet. If he takes down Jason and he gets out, the, the, man, the man with guts of steel and Geekfam might be looking for the win as they just instantly knock on the door of Resurgence. Better air strike just to zone it out. They're gonna take out the rest of the inhibitor turns and they're gonna rush right in. Zorn goes in on a KO on three! And Resurgence might be obliterated this time. Dominus gets caught by one of the Dragon Ball. Ozora Becky is in the back line. Flickers away to safety. And Geekfam might have earned themselves the revenge. They're gonna finish up KZP. Fix shoots down the crystal. And Geekfam sends Resurgence to the lower bracket. Watch out, watch out, watch out, man. What an Atlas ultimate towards the 